Our next speaker today is, uh, I hope I'll pronounce it correct, Itka, Itka Shosho. Itka Shoshova, who studied at Charles University and Umprom both in Prague and the Université de Bourgogne in Dijon, France. She holds degrees in art history and theory and history of design and new media. She recently received her PhD from Umprom Prague. In her doctoral research, she focuses on the construction of the art historical canon of modern art as established in Czechoslovakia and the Czech Republic after 1989. Her curatorial practice focuses on projects reflecting her main interest in the methodology of art history. In 2011, Rytka has concluded a four-year research project focused on a collection of fine arts assembled by Czechoslovakian presidents in the Prague Castle between 1918 and 1953, and together with her colleague Marketa Jeczkova, uh, presented the findings in a form of a show and a comprehensive catalogue under the title Buy It Then. She also participated in the capacity of junior curator at permanent exhibit of the National Gallery of Prague entitled 1918-1938, The First Republic, that is based on original research into topology of interwar artistic practice in Czechoslovakia, led by Anna Pravdova. Rytka, the floor is yours. Uh, Itka, sorry. Thank you for being here with us. So thank you for the uh, for your kind words. Thank you for having me, and I will actually kind of continue with what uh, what Andrea started just before me. So perhaps it is useful to say that I will be focusing on the same area, but perhaps from a different perspective. Uh, she was focusing on the narratives. I will go more into the actual practice of writing art history. Also, I think a brief forward is uh, uh, is actually warranted because I will be using a lot of art historians as the uh, as the, let's say, description of the heroes of my story. And uh, I just want to say it's the generalization, I know it, it's merely for the sake of brevity. And I know that it could be responded with, but not all are historians. That is true, but enough of them. So uh, let's, uh, uh, let's begin. Uh, after 1989, uh, Czech art history found itself at the beginning uh, of history, so to speak, but it was not alone. So, um, on the contrary, the beginning of the 1990s in the whole Czechoslovak cultural, societal and political practice was largely marked by the notion of the zero hour. Uh, so far established ways of acting, of thinking were discarded, at the very least were supposed to be, uh, because of their association with the previous past, with the socialist past. Uh, it was seen as necessary because of post-revolutionary consensus was based primarily on a shared rejection of the past regime and all its attributes. New forms of action, of thought, of communication were established gradually, but the socialist past for, was for a long time the other that defined them and connected them. So what did actually the socialist framework look like and uh, how, when we, how when we compare it to the capital one, capitalist one, sorry, established later? In their post-revolutionary practice of art history, Czechoslovak and later since 19, uh, 1993, uh, later Czech art historians specifically opposed the form of the discipline during the so-called normalization uh, during the 1970s. During the aftermath of Prague Spring of uh, 1968, the Czechoslovak society and specifically the Czechoslovak academia had to operate under a new set of rules. These differed strongly from the state socialism of the 1960s, the celebrated socialism with the human face as the popular saying went, but also from its talent and post-Stalinist variations. And this new set of rules could be defined by a renewed emphasis on Marxist-Leninist framing for the contemporary scholarly practice. In other words, in the shared consciousness of the field, uh, socialism in the 1990s, it was not object of historical analysis yet, but rather of memory. This approach, albeit entirely understandable, also tinted the perspective of what represents the correct state of the discipline, and it was defined primarily by conservative methods and by a moralistic approach to the artworks, which was more evident in the case of post-war art. It was indeed this period, so the post-war art production, uh, that was the most problematic because of the need to even establish the new canon. And it is also why I focused on uh, the uh, canonization processes and uh, why I aimed my discursive analysis on it. 
So as I already stated, uh, Czechoslovak uh, art historians of the 1990s also looked in then recent art um, production using the basic methods of the field. What remained essential were actually the tools that were established by the classics of the discipline in the 19th century. The concepts of development, the concepts of style, and of course of author. Constructing genealogies and grouping the works based on their stylistic characteristics became the new basic method of constructing the new canon. And while doing it, Czech art historians work with historical sources, which, however, they often treat it without thinking into account another classical tool of gen general historiography, uh, in this case, the source criticism. Uh, they often interpreted the available sources posit positivistically, with a major emphasis on the descriptiveness, and a less on context. Specifically in the, fields of, in the field of post-war art studies, scholars have often attributed significantly less importance to the sources from the official, and I know the binary is unfunctional in many aspects, but let's use it for the well sake of brevity, so of com coming from the official sides, and on the contrary, had given uh, an uncritical preference to the sources of cultural opposition. In part, this was probably due to the fact that the nature of oppositional memory con uh, coincided with the new expectation of individualized history. However, opposition sources were, were primarily protected by the authenticity of their origin and therefore understood as automatically true. Uh, for, my, uh, for many contemporaries, such a limited critical approach was also motivated strongly by an effort to pay off the death uh, of the recent past in the shortest possible, uh, possible time, which many art historians genuinely considered a moral obligation of their profession. Such a conviction, together with an uncritical acceptance of credibility of the cultural opposition sources, uh, led to the tacit belief uh, that close or critical reading of the documents is redundant. Instead, two concepts uh, fill this void, the author and the direction of history. The third, and I know we're kind of obsessed with thirds today, so the third constituting element of post-revolution Czech modern art history wasn't so much as a concept, I think it was more of, more of an absence, the absence of context. So, uh, let's see. The uh, omnipresence of author, this is me showing you for the first and last time any pictures in my presentation. So I wanted to include something visually pleasing, but I also wanted to remind myself and perhaps even you that there are multiple discourses that were relevant in my discursive analysis. On the first row, you can see some of the crucial and very often, uh, often cited um, publications, titles of uh, Czech art history. The last one with the red tank is even uh, called the, the payment to a debt. So you can see that the metaphor was really present. On the lower row, however, I also included some uh, some publications. The Průvodce výtvarným uměním is a textbook for elementary school uh, artistic education. Uh, Galerijní animace is one of the very first volumes that were published in the Czech-speaking uh, context uh, for the gallery education. And also you can see that uh, this was also something the notion how to communicate the post-war art was also somewhat interesting also to the mass media. So this creates the context of my, uh, of my um, discourse analysis. Uh, and all these, in all these statements and utterance, the author played the, the critical part. So, in the field of art history, the concept of authorship allowed art historians to define themselves in relation to the previous practice of the discipline and provided them with a means of searching for continuities that existed despite the interruption of diversion of Czech history, which is often how socialism was described in the 1990s. Uh, because of that, the application of the concept is rather specific from, uh, from the Western counterparts in the, uh, in the era. Although some of Roland Bart theoretical works were known in the Czech Republic before and after the Velvet Revolution, his concept of the death of the author was, none, uh, was not one of them. The author, thus, existed less as a theoretical concept and more as a subject with their own morality and psychology. The author consistently, therefore, appears in the Czech art historical, historical texts as the measure of quality. Uh, because of the absence of the theoretical tools, uh, at the time, uh, the concept of the author became even more attractive for scholars as well as uh, the general public. A basic orientation in the vast material that was, uh, that was just emerging to be known, which during the, the socialism was uh, in many cases, even 
in perhaps majority of the cases, known only to experts and maybe friends, so close circle of people, uh, required some sort of organization. Specifically, to construct a new canon of the post-war art, Czech art historians needed a tool that would allow them to structure and, above all, to put in place a hierarchy. Uh, this hierarchy was to be based primarily on the originality of the form and authenticity of the political values held by the author of the work. The question of how responsibly and morally artists behaved during the years of socialism, these questions were crucial. The criterion was also shared by other disciplines as well during the 1990s in, uh, in the Czech Republic. For example, sociologist Josef Alan pointed out this emphasis of research at the very beginning of the new millennium when he was uh, focusing on the study of the alternative culture. So uh, up in the, uh, in the box, you have it in Czech, so Pavlina can enjoy it. And uh, for the rest of us, we have the translation beneath. So in, in English, it goes, the focus of alternative culture was not culture itself, but the position of the author artist who sought a space of self-realization in it. While the boundaries of the space were fixed and closed, the winding and shifting border zone, our favorite gray zone, was also crisscrossed with pathways through which contact with the other side could, could be maintained. The resulting application of this standard, so the standard of causality between the declared, important thing, declared political values of the author and their work, was, uh, supposed, was supposed to ensure the art history that would be free from the political pressures that have, admittingly, shaped it at least since uh, 1948. In this practice, the refusal of no, not only the Marxist-Leninist, but any ideology while writing art history was seen as the fundamental axiom of the new paradigm. The other one would be either the direction of history or, more poetically put, the arrow of history. Uh, among the other subtle continuities between socialist and capitalist or history in Czech uh, was the idea of direction of history, which in the form of historically determined laws of development was the founding principle of the previous Marxist model of historiography. In the Czech environment of the 1990s, however, this was a concept that the majority of the population, including many historians, did not associate with the socialist past, but rather with the first Czechoslovak Republic and its first president. The topic in the 1990s was already established in the Czech historical and political discussions, and it was known as, uh, as a topic that was strongly linked to the end of the 19th century. Uh, because of its connection with the definition of Czech national identity, given the duration of these debates, as well as their national basis, and finally that their date of origin, which preceded socialism, it seemed as an unproblematic concept in the 1990s. The very idea of the direction of history was not, at least in the field of art history, subjected to fundamental criticism, simply because no one perceived it as a Marxist one, as well as a Hegelian one. Uh, rather, art historians in the early 1990s channeled their efforts into the task of finding an alternative direction of history other than the victory of the working class. Uh, this soon became the present of post-revolutionary Czechoslovakia, and the art history gained a role in creating of this self-fulfilling prophecy. The discipline contributed to the construction of a continuous story of artistic production that took place beneath the surface of official social art. An early example of this much broader approach was an exhibition organized in the Prague Castle Riding Hall by art historians Jaromir Zemina and Marcela Pankova, together with the artist Stanislav Koribal. Intended as a permanent exhibition of the National Gallery in Prague, its ambition was openly declared from the very beginning. And here we go. Uh, from everything available in the National Gallery collections, they wanted to exhibit the, art, the authors of the exhibition refer to themselves in the third person. So it might be slightly confusing. So from everything available in the National Gallery collection, they, the curators, wanted to exhibit not only what stood up uh, best to evaluation in terms of originality, developmental rigor, and of course, artistic quality and content, uh, content relevance in general. In accordance with the division of main exhibition space of the writing hall, dominated by a long diagonal, it was the main panel that really cut through the space, uh, designed to evoke the idea of journey. The authors, in arranging the exhibits, emphas emphasized above all the fact that the development of modern artistic thought in Bohemia, despite many unfavorable political circumstances, has an internal continuity. 
Uh, the aforementioned benchmark of the new uh, of the new exhibition, the ultra and the continuous development, were among the, uh, the familiar, even fundamental concepts of the field already under socialism. Thus, it can be argued that the structure of Czech art historians' thinking remained largely identical after the end of the of the 1989 revolution. What changed was the artistic material that they studied, uh, the ethos of the discipline, and the rhetoric of its representatives. I hope you will like my visual joke. So the absence of context is the is the last chapter, the section I would like to discuss. Uh, in the 1990s, the greatest challenge was to achieve a non-politicized form of art history. The contemporary actors in Czechoslovakia and later in the Czech Republic had a lot of to build on because researchers had already developed various defensive and escape strategies under socialism. They could, react, for example, influence the level of engagement required by the choice of the topic to be researched, or they could focus on autonomous questions of art history. This is something that Andrea before me, I think, named uh, very precisely. Uh, the latter strategy, in particular, seems to have been popular in some form. Uh, some form. However, interest in a specifically art historical problems was not typically realized in the 1970s and 1980s through methodolo methodological research, but rather, again, through the application of procedures that belong to the basic register of craft of art history. Uh, those, those became the means uh, by which art historians could write about artistic phenomena without having to contextualize them in a more fundamental way. Indeed, the construction of context was difficult under the condition of socialist art history, precisely because it could not be carried out without excursion into areas requiring engagement, so requiring specific thinking and specific rhetoric. In the sense of specific language and partisan, communist partisan, evaluation of historical phenomena. These problematic contexts were, for example, such basic layers of analysis as the contemporary political or social condition of the work studied or their provenance. Many contemporaries therefore saw a more ethical choice in an analysis that simply did not include these implicitly political aspects. Since the roots of the concept of development go back to the efforts to scientify art history uh, of the late 19th century, it was exceptionally suited to the research practice of the 1990s, which was supposed to fulfill the ideal of non-political science. However, stylistic analysis must necessarily be highly descriptive, but it was also no longer a negative quality under the condition of state socialism, as the focus on descriptive genres of scholar production represented another proven strategy of escape from political demands. All these strategies of writing art history were quite common in the Czech academia. And for many art historians, I believe at least, uh, they have become internalized, unproblematic practices over the years. However, uh, these methodological and conceptual continuities of Czech art history were covered up in everyday use by an innovative terminology and an implicit condemnation of the socialist past. They were no less clearly communicating to the recipient of the art itself, so the non-conformist art of, of post-war period in uh, Czechoslovakia. Thus, the most significant change in the dominant form of the discipline after 1989 was a more thorough construction of the social and political context of the art under, of the art studied within the framework of all our historical research. Uh, this corresponds, I think, uh, to the form of methodology that many actors of, uh, uh, of the many actors in Czech art history of the 1990s adopted in their previous research practice, although within the framework of state socialism, but due to its continuous application after 1989, they considered it more symptomless and unbiased. This was possible also because at the level of the scientific discourse of art history, there was no methodological discussion after the revolution that critically reflected the theoretical foundation of the contemporary state of the discipline. Rather, contemporary actors focused on strategies of relabeling, but under these strategies, many un unreflected concepts of socialist research practice survived. It is evident by the areas of research in post-war art history that lay outside of mainstream of 1990s. I believe that in contrast to the individualized histories, uh, they, uh, these were mainly disembodied fields, so to speak, with no clear actors, such as various forms of institutional or discursive practices. And I think it is also being confirmed by the fact that uh, um, they are only now receiving the attention in the Czech context. So uh, the history of exhibition would be, would be one of those. Uh, according to the post-1989 consensus, and I promise this is the last paragraph, so we will be 
will be done soon. Uh, the demands of the previous Marxist model of art historical research were to be made explicit only in the authoritative official discourse at the end of the state socialism, which, however, no one allegedly took seriously. The ideal form of the discipline of uh, was to be an unbiased scholarly discourse constructed in opposition to this. However, as the result of a discursive analysis of the concept and comparison to the terminology and methodology used before and after 89 show, our historians continued to use a range of tools they had acquired within the socialist practice of the discipline, despite the historical rupture. Specifically, in the field of research on post-war Czech art, these included a strong emphasis on the authorial intentionality, developmental autonomy, and the framing of individual authors, and hence work, in networks of influence and information, with an emphasis on the continuity of artistic development independent of the political situation. Thus, the structures of thought remained largely identical, with the historical facts with which the representatives of the discipline were changing. Thank you.